Today we'll walk through the step-by-step -step process of making your photos look like film with the help of Lightroom. So let's get into it. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna learn how to make your photos look like film with some really easy steps in Lightroom. Now this film look that we're going for today is the typical look that you probably see on Instagram with people's edits, where you basically take a digital photo and then you lift up the shadows, you change the white balance and play around with some colors to give it a film-like appearance to match that of a film camera. Now obviously there are different types of films that give you a different type of look, but in this tutorial we're basically just chasing after that typical film-like edit that you see on Instagram so that you can apply it into your digital photos. So if you're ready to learn how this all works, let's hop into Lightroom and get started. So the photo that we'll be working with today is this wintry image and before you do anything you want to just make sure that the general exposure of your photo is looking all right. When you're taking photos you might expose for the highlights something like this for example. So in this case you would maybe want to boost the exposure a bit to account for that darkening just so then you can see the overall image a little bit better. Now once you have that general exposure adjustment made you now want to go through and flatten out your image and reduce the contrast because that's what gives your image that film look. Now the first way that you can do that is here within the basics tab of the develop module is the highlight shadows whites and black sliders. So the ones that you'll want to work with first are the shadows and the blacks. So I'll start by dragging up the shadows and it's going to reduce that contrast and show more detail in the dark areas of my photo. The same thing with the blacks, it's going to further flatten out my image and reduce that contrast. Now from here I might reduce some of that white and reduce the highlights as well so then things aren't looking too excessively bright. The goal here is to make your photo look a little bit more flat, which is a huge staple of film-like edits that you see everywhere online. Now once you've flattened out your image, we'll go to the white balance adjustment and we'll bring down the tint to add a bit of green, then we'll bring up the temperature just to add a little bit of yellow. So playing around with these two sliders, you can start to stylize the image a little bit more and favor that greenish tint that a lot of film edits have. So now we're off to a really good start and we can now go down to our tone curve. Now, as I've talked about in previous Lightroom tutorials, the tone curve is a great place to add stylized contrast to your photo, but in this case, we don't wanna have a ton of contrast so we can use it to do the reverse effect and reduce some contrast a little bit further in a stylized way, of course. So I'll once again drag up those darks to try to flatten out the image a bit, but since we did it before already, we don't need to go crazy with it anymore. As for the lights and highlights, I'm gonna drag that down a bit just to help deal with some of the bright areas in my photo a little bit more. And then if you find that your image is looking too flat, like this for example, you can always bring down the shadows or the darks and you can add a little bit of contrast back in depending on what you're into. So for this photo, I think a little bit of added shadows helps a little bit more. So turning that tone curve on and off, it just helps to further reduce the contrast in the image. Now the next adjustment that we'll talk about is the HSL adjustment, and here you can edit some of the colors in your photo. Now film cameras typically don't have these bright crazy colors, so you want to go for more natural and muted tones in your photo. You're not gonna want some crazy bright blue or something like that. For film edits, you wanna have a bit more of a muted color palette for the overall image. So starting with the hue adjustment here, the easiest thing I like to do is using this sample option right here. With the sample option selected, I can click any color in my photo and then I can adjust the hue of it accordingly. So starting with the paddle here, I'll just click on that yellow, I'll drag up, to change the hue one way or down to change the hue the other way. Since we're going for a film look, this red doesn't really fit that film aesthetic that we're going for. However, dragging it up and then favoring that more light yellow, that is now more in the ballpark of what we're going for. Clicking on the background in the blues here, I'll just click and drag down and I'll drag up to see what the options I have. In this case, just adding a little bit of greenish teal hue to the background looks nice to me. And turning that on and off, we now have a nice starting point with the hue adjustments. Next, we'll go to the saturation, click on the sample option once again, but this time you're going to change the saturation rather than the hue. So to start things off, I'll go to the paddle and just desaturate it just a little bit like this. Then I'll go and just desaturate the background just a little bit as well. And then since her face is looking a bit washed out because of the paddle sample, we might have to just increase that saturation a little bit as well. Now the last thing we will do here is the luminance, which changes the brightness of certain colors. So once again, clicking that sample option, I'll go and click on the paddle and I can lighten it or darken it. 
In this case, I like a little bit of a lighter look and then I can click on the background and I might just darken that up a little bit like that. So turning that HSL adjustment on and off, notice the really big difference that that makes. It mutes some of the colors and adds a little bit of the green that we tried to get earlier with the white balance and tint adjustments. So now that is looking really good and we can go into our final step, which is adding a little bit of grain into the photo. So down here in the effects tab, there is a slider called grain and by dragging it up, let me zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. Dragging this up all the way to the max, look at all of this stuff you see going on. So that is basically grain. And on a lot of film cameras, depending on the film you're shooting with, you're gonna have a lot of this stuff in your photo. So by adding a bit into your digital images, it can help to give your photo more of a film look. So just to give you an example here, going to the size, if I drag that up, it starts to make those grains a little bit more noticeable. And then likewise, if I increase the roughness, that also makes those grains extremely noticeable. So it depends how heavy you want this to look, but for most cases, I'm willing to bet you don't want your photo to look like this. So you wanna be a little bit more sparing with your adjustments. Starting with my default settings, I'll increase the amount slider until I start to see a bit of grain in my photo. So something around this looks pretty good to me. It's very subtle, but it is there. Now we'll just increase the size to make it a bit more noticeable. And then as for the roughness, if you're still not happy with how grainy your image looks, you can increase the roughness if you would like, or you can decrease it if you're more into that too. Now at this point, we have a lot more grain into our photo. Turn that on and off. You can see how that gives it a bit more of a film aesthetic. And with that effect, we've completed our film edit. So let's look at the before and after. You can see how we've changed the hues to be a little bit more muted. We favor a more green hue, and we've also added some noise into the photo to make it look like film rather than this smooth digital look that you see over here. Now, as for the background and things like that, we've once again muted down some of the tones, made it a little less saturated, but still we're favoring those green and light blue hues, whereas before we had those purples. These are the kinds of hues that look really nice for that film aesthetic that we're going for. Now this film-like edit looks amazing for all types of photos, but it especially looks great with portraits. So if you love this film aesthetic, but you don't have a film camera, then you can always try to edit your photos like this with the help of Lightroom. Now with that said, if you've never shot with a film camera before, I would definitely recommend shooting with one because it's a ton of fun and it's a bit of a different experience than shooting with a regular digital camera. So with that, if you enjoyed today's tutorial and you learned something today, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.